The Princeton Tigers in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2004. Their head coach, Sidney Johnson, just 36 years old now in his fourth year at the helm of this program. And a former three-time captain is a player for Princeton. His starting five, Matt Brady's Davis, the hero in that win over Harvard, 63 to 62. The Ivy League playoff, Connolly in the middle, Hummer and Saunders, the starting five for Princeton. For Kentucky, tremendous win over Florida in the SEC championship game, 70 to 54. It's Lamb, Knight, freshman combination in the backcourt with Darius Miller, the junior, Harrelson in the middle, and Terrence Jones, who was the freshman of the year in the SEC. And John Calipari is his team seated a little lower than some may have expected. I think Calipari believes that they were probably lower than what he anticipated on Selection Sunday. They're a four seed. And this game is brought to you in HDTV by LG. Life's good. Kentucky riding a six-game winning streak, peaking at the right time. Pat Driscoll, Michael Irving, and Larry Spaulding, the officiating crew here in Tampa. Was Kentucky lower than you expected? Yeah, I think so. You know, it's especially, you know, I think you have to look at it in two ways with that one. Number one is the fact that they're young. They didn't play as well, I think. They had a little bit of a topsy-turvy type of run back in January and early February, and then they come into the SEC tournament and play very well, so they're growing. I think John Calipari doesn't really care about where he's seated. I think he was caring about how well his team started to evolve, and I think they've timed it perfectly. I think it always goes back to the last six games before the NCAA tournament starts to see how your team is playing. These guys are growing up quickly. Jones and Connolly jump it up, and Princeton controls the tip. They shared the Ivy League title with Harvard, forced the one-game playoff, and then got the win in dramatic fashion. Jumper, Patrick Saunders is off the mark. It's rebounded by Harrelson. He was second in the SEC in rebounding behind his teammate, Terrence Jones. And Sidney Johnson from the coach with Princeton had mentioned yesterday, this is not just a slow down Princeton offense that they run, but they don't want to get up and down and really run and gun with Kentucky and play into their strengths. Miller, SEC Tournament MVP. He got pushed there, no call from Saunders. Turnaround doesn't go. Rebound controlled by Princeton. Navarrete's got his hands on it. And now the Tigers come the other way. So this isn't the old school Princeton Tiger teams that people have come to expect. No, more athletic, a little bit more up and down, but also the core is the, still the same in terms of the ability to run backdoor cuts in that motion. The old Princeton offense, if you will, on the Pete Carrill, the longtime coach at Princeton. Last NCAA tournament win came in 1998 as a five seed over UNLV. And one of the most indelible images, 1996, they stunned defending champion UCLA in Indianapolis. Shot clock is winding down, seven to shoot. Connolly gets it outside. Davis setting it up now with four to shoot. High screen from Connolly. Davis, pull up, pop. Off the rim, no, and it's rebounded by Miller for Kentucky. Here's what Kentucky would like to do. They'd like to get this thing going up and get it down the floor in a hurry. When it's not there, though, Knight is very good in being deliberate in terms of setting the stage. 52nd NCAA tournament appearance for Kentucky. Get it inside for Harrelson. Kick it out now. Jones, the jumper. Harrelson knocked it upstairs and gets the roll. Well, Harrelson very good at hitting the offensive glass. That's one of the things he does so very, very well. So that's going to be a tough out for Princeton to keep him off the glass, and Jones also. He has been a revelation this season in his senior year out of St. Charles, Missouri. Ian Hummer knocked away. Tough matchup with Jones. Hummer now with 15 to shoot. First couple of minutes here, Princeton has to find a way to believe that they can get a good look. Now Brady's. I may have gotten away with a travel, and it's going to go the other way. Ian Hummer called on the offensive foul. Right, so so far Princeton in their sets have been, well, three times, haven't convinced anybody. And Sidney Johnson thinking it through right now on the sideline. He's saying, take that little jumper if you have it. But still haven't, they haven't convinced themselves yet that they're able to get off a good shot yes, yet against Kentucky's length. Last year... Ivy League representative in the NCAA tournament was Cornell. They yep. beat Temple, they beat Wisconsin, eventually lost in the Sweet 16 to Kentucky at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Miller, outside for Knight, calls out of play. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Miller being defended by Saunders out on the perimeter. 2-3 zone look right now, but then it switches 
to a matchup. Miller playing with a lot of confidence. Foul called Connolly there defensively. So that'll be the first on Brendan Connolly, the sophomore. And it will send Darius Miller, the junior from Maysville, Kentucky, to the free throw line, 85% on the season. What a run he had in the SEC tournament. His Kentucky program, a lot of history behind it. Notable alumni, Pat Riley, president of the Miami Heat, and Ashley Judd, huge college basketball Absolutely. player. Four nothing, Kentucky in front. The number four seed in the East, Princeton still looking to get on the board. Navarades with Lamb. Spread the floor, Mavrady's a three, short. Rebounded by Knight, Kentucky looking to run. Knight pushing tempo, gives it up. Lamb lays it in. Boy, like a laser coming down the floor. And once they got that quick shot to go outside by Mavrady's, boy, if you don't get the rebound on the offensive end, that's exactly how Kentucky likes to play it. How quick is Knight getting down the floor? The Tigers averaged an un-Princeton-like 70 points per game this season, but they cannot find the basket here in the early moments. Davis off the mark. Miller swings it inside. Jones contact, and it rims out. Foul on Jones backing in. He picks up his first. And you take a look at how quickly they come off and watch good guards always find a way to get to the middle of the floor. So well done by Knight just then. He started on the left, brought himself across, and John Calipari thinking probably the same thing I was thinking that it was a quick little hitter down there defensively and a, almost like a half a flop is what he's calling for. This is a Kentucky team that led the SEC in scoring this season, 76.4 points per game. Davis keeping on the perimeter, Matt Brady's. Kentucky's not coming out and challenging in a hurry on the perimeter, which does not allow for backdoor cuts that off. The back in, Hummer squeezes one through. And he gets Princeton on the board. 6-2, Wildcats. Yeah, Hummer is very, very good at using that body to be able to position himself. And then with that left hand, as a lefty, he's got that tiny advantage to make things happen. Miller pulls the trigger and connects for three. Nobody at home for Princeton just then. Not even a person within five feet right there for that jumper for Miller. Darius Miller, who took a back seat last year to all those players that moved on to the NBA. And Miller has taken on more responsibility this year, especially in the leadership category. He's one of the older statesmen. Jumper, Davis. And it went over the backboard, out of bounds. The Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year, Kareem Maddox, is in the game now for Princeton. Kentucky off to the good start. 9-2, Wildcats. Greg Gumbel in New York with an HP tournament update. Over on TBS in Southwest Regional Play in Denver, Louisville off to a slow start, trailed 15-2. They're doing okay now. Chris Smith with a three. The Cardinals now lead by eight, 47-39 over Moorhead State. Back to Tampa, Iron Eagle, Jim Spinarco, David Aldridge. All right, Greg, now the alarm clock may be a little bit later than expected for Rick Pitino and company, but it seems like the Cardinals have gotten their footing. So far, Kentucky with a 9-2 lead on Princeton. Well, and that's the thing about Louisville, too, Ian, is the fact that, you know, with the way they play, if they get it steal, they'll go down the floor, and if they're three on two, they'll take a three-pointer. So they are very explosive at the offensive end of the floor. Knight looks to the inside. Jones off the back end. Kick out. Miller. Harrelson, good seal, and he lays it in. Josh Harrelson just too physical down there as Patrick Saunders was trying to D up. Yeah, you're right, and absolutely in terms of being able to not only hit the post with the pass, but the entry pass has to be right on the money, which it was. So Princeton, a little undersized down deep in Kentucky trying to take advantage of it. Princeton, one of seven from the field. Kentucky has hit on its last four field goal attempts. Not been able to get anything going towards the basket at all. Maddox, a jumper, book it. A little spacing there off the dribble. Boy, they really need him. Sixth man of the year last year, back to back. He's come up again with another great effort off the bench for them this season. It's remarkable the way he comes off the bench and really leads their team. And we asked Sidney Johnson about it. Why not start Maddox? He said he's just been comfortable off the bench. He likes that role. We're not going to mess with it. 
And they've had so much success with it, why would you? Wow. Knight, crossover, lob, and jam! It's Harrelson up top, and a special delivery by Knight. A little bit of speed there by Knight being able to break you down off the dribble, and boy, once you get by the guard, guard who is supposed to stop you, it's a difficult task. A lot of good things happen. Nice backdoor cut, finally. And it's Maddox getting the bucket with Saunders there on the feed. Hole cut off there by Mavrades. Knight will set things up with Miller. A lot of man movement for Kentucky in these half-court sets. Jones one-on-one. -on -one. Good defense there by Maddox. Harrelson able to throw it off Maddox out of bounds, and Kentucky will retain it. Well, if you take a look, there's the breakdown, and obviously defenders have to come over and help out. You'll see the step across right there. And then that just leaves Harrelson all by himself for the finish because of the dribble penetration by Knight. Deron Lamb gets it in for DeAndre Liggins, junior from Chicago's checked in. Miller rimming out, and it's rebounded by Hummer for Princeton. 13-6, Kentucky in front. Maddox out on the perimeter, Connolly back in there for the Tigers. Navrades doesn't take the three initially. Good close by Liggins, all SEC first team defensive member. That's one of the things what Kentucky will do. You get it on the blocks, they close in a hurry defensively. Navrades lost it, but able to recover and get the bucket. I like the extension too on that delivery to get it away from Harrelson, not allowing him to get a touch on the basketball. A little bit of, building a little foundation if you're Princeton right now terms of confidence. Kentucky leads by five. Just over seven minutes gone by in this first half. Lamb gets rid of it. Harrelson a back in. Kick out. Lamb the penetration. And the running one-hander doesn't go. It's rebounded by Davis. Princeton pushing it up the floor. A little late. And a step through there by Lamb to knock it free. Seven national championships, 13 Final Fours for this Kentucky program. Shot clock is down to 13. Liggins for Knight. Navratti's holding his ground. Gives it up. Harrelson. Oh, oh, steps there, I thought. And poke free. Hummer, the drive, and lay in. Nice work right there. Good closure defensively by Princeton. Hummer getting out. Yeah, that's what they need to do. What the, what's happening here, Ian, is they're forcing this into a half-court slowdown action, Princeton is. And Kentucky's going into their slow half-court mm -hmm. deliberate sets, which I don't think they really want to get into as much. It's a 6-0 run. Yes. Miller almost lost it, leaning through, counted, and the foul. Darius Miller going to the free throw line. That was very close yeah, sure was. to a tie -up. It sure was. A split second away from a tie -up. We'll take a look. Here's the reach in from behind, and there's the finish. Kentucky in front, 15 to 10. Now the Powerade sideline report as we check in with the third member of our broadcast team, David Aldridge. DA has more on the number 13 seed in the East, the Princeton Tigers. Well, Ian, as you and Jim have been talking about, this is a different Princeton attack than you may remember from 1996 when they beat UCLA in that big upset. This is an attack that is much more athletic. They're much more willing to push the ball. And with senior players, they're much more willing to take chances. Sidney Johnson actually heard from Pete Carrell this summer, who visited with him, and it was Carrell, the legendary Hall of Fame coach who coached Johnson for three years in the 90s that had a lot of input in changing the offense and saying, hey, these guys are more athletic. They don't have to do the back cuts and everything, but the results are the same. Even though they're playing faster, the goals and the results are the same. To get an open shot as quick as possible I mean. yeah, no doubt and when we talked to Sidney DA uh, he said that it's rooted in the Princeton offense but he played seven years overseas so he's incorporated some of those characteristics he sat on John Thompson's bench Princeton and Georgetown so it's been a blend of all of those experiences and a touch of Bill Carmody also played for him one year and Hummer had it taken away by Vargas who just checked in for Kentucky and that's where the size, that's where Princeton has to make sure that 
Just one travel to the basket like that, and a trip to the basket. Kentucky's length comes into play in a hurry. Six-point lead for Kentucky after the three-point play from Miller. Open look, and Miller missed it. Rebounded by Mavrides. Nice work by Princeton on the defensive glass there. When you get the ball to bounce off the glass, Ian, you know you're doing a good job blocking out. DJ Bray, freshman from New Berlin, Wisconsin, has checked in for the first time. Post-up opportunity. Off the back end by Maddox. Kick out. Open luck. Bray, rainbow three doesn't go. And knocked out of bounds because Lamb could not secure it. So Princeton's going to get it back with a new shot clock. One of the things to watch with the way Kentucky, and I've always believed this is a way to defend the Princeton offense with their backdoor cuts, is they want to set you up and get you leaning away from the basket. And John Calipari has his team not rushing out to the perimeter as much. Nice little behind-the-back pass right there. Nobody looking for it. Will Barrett in the game, and he lays it in. Plus one. A little sleeper on the offside in terms of the way Princeton enters the basketball right there. Nobody's paying attention to Jones falling asleep, and that allows the drive to the basket. But getting back to that point I of defending the, the traditional Princeton offense is you want to allow the catch, I have always believed, allow the catch on the perimeter. Don't come out and defend it with your legs locked and really leaning, and then play one-on-one man-to-man -on -one defense. It's a much more effective way to play defense. Will Barrett converts on the free throw, a three-point play to cut the Kentucky lead to three. We'll hit the halfway point of this first half. Lamb pull up top. He knocks it down to Ron Lamb. Out of New York City, slasher whose mid-range game extended out. I think he surprised some people with his three-point shooting. 47% this season to lead the SEC. Yeah, the shooting has picked up. His defensive level has picked up also. Mavrides and denied by Vargas. Kentucky running the floor. Lamb able to turn the corner and draw the foul. I like that kind of basketball with Kentucky. They make it happen defensively. Here's the drive. You don't get real good, strong elevation. That ball can hit the glass and still be on the way up, and you can take it off. But then they go down and explode on you very quickly. Second round action around the NCAA tournament. And a chance for you to pick the game that you want to watch over on TBS in Louisville and Moorhead State in a close one. Penn State and Temple on TNT. Three-point lead for the Nittany Lions, and over on True TV, Pitt and North Carolina Asheville. Overtime win in the first four, and you can check out the action from Washington, D.C. Lamb adds to the Kentucky lead, 19-13. It'll be interesting with Pitt this year in the NCAA tournament with Jamie Dixon's team, very solid, really experienced team, a hard-nosed, aggressive defensive team. Princeton lost to Kentucky in the 1977 NCAA tournament, 72 to 58. Good look by Davis. Kentucky 19, Princeton 15. Davis, the junior from Philadelphia. Really squeezing the floor. You'll notice Princeton trying to keep it, even though man-to-man -man right now, they try to really bunch up the middle of the floor for those drives and those deliveries by Kentucky and the slashes. Now it's Jones over Connolly, and a foul is called. Download the free CBS Sports mobile app and get live tournament scores and stats. For more info, go to cbssports.com slash mobile. First foul on Dan Mavrades, senior from San Mateo, California. And Jones at the free throw line where he shoots it at 66%. Jones and Knight, both part of the first team freshman All-American squad. Eloy Vargas, the transfer from Florida, will sit down. He's replaced by Harrelson. Remember, Kentucky thought they were going to have Ennis Cantor, fantastic right. freshman big man, who many believe is going to be a player that you'll hear from down the road. <laughs> I'm sure you will. But Cantor was ruled ineligible after he reportedly received some form of payment back in Turkey. 20 to 15, Kentucky. 8.27 to go in this first half. Barrett, pull up jump, short. 
And a foul called as Kareem Maddox was trying to corral the loose ball. Liggins was over there. And he'll get the personal for Kentucky. Darius Miller will come back in. I made a comment, Ryan, about the three-minute mark into this game where Princeton did not establish a confidence level against John Calipari's team. They're getting there. They're making some strides in terms of the confidence. I think there have been some runs where they've driven to the basket and had some nice layup opportunities. Good work by Harrison there to stick down the middle, take the steal. Kentucky trying to push it, pull up, pop. Doesn't go for Knight. Long rebound. Matt Radies gets it ahead. Davis now. They've got numbers. Maddox. Lob. Maddox had it denied by Miller. And I, Kentucky comes away with a I, loose ball. I think the basic bounce pass was a better choice, but it was a little too late just then for a lob. They back it out for Jones. Under eight minutes to go in this first half. Kentucky 20. Princeton 15. Jones and Harrelson try to get on the same page. Shot clock at 12. Entry feed, Jones. Off the ball fake and the floater doesn't go. He struggled offensively during the SEC tournament to find his shot. And one of the things that he just had just then against Matt Brady is he had that opportunity of a big disadvantage to be able to post up and he went away from it, went to the middle of the floor instead. Connolly gives it up. Davis thought about it. Shot clock at 15. Princeton down by five. High screen, pull up jump, and it rattles home for Doug Davis. Good looking shot right there and under control. You know, when you have those guys setting high screens for you, if you're smart with the basketball, you don't have to go on the first one. You might want to wait for the second or third opportunity, like Davis just did to get an open shot. Nice uh, step across defensively by well, Conley. And it's Kareem Maddox also over there to just get a little piece of the basketball yeah. to throw off the timing. Good work. That's what I was talking about before I'm with that squeezing the middle of the floor. Don't allow the, you know, don't allow them to get a cut to the basket like you're trying to do in your sets. Connolly, six and a half to play. First half, Matt Brady's lines it up. Matt can't hit the three. Shoots it at 39% from three-point territory this season. Crossing over, it's Knight. Tip in, doesn't go for Jones. And the rebound to Barrett for Princeton. Anytime you can get a one and done if you're Princeton off the defensive glass. And especially with Jones and Harrelson on the floor, who are the best in the SEC at rebound, and especially Harrelson on the offensive glass, number one. Barrett gives it up. This senior class for Princeton went 6 and 23 as freshmen. Davis. Oh, he knocks it down. It's a three. And the first three of the game for the Princeton Tigers. Timeout, Kentucky. It is still early, but confidence has arrived for Princeton right now. We are tied at 20 with 5.50 to go. First half, the action continues from Tampa. The game summary, Kentucky led this one 13 to 4 through the first six minutes. Then Princeton outscored Kentucky 16 to 7 and we're tied at 20. Let's take you back. 1996 NCAA tournament in Indianapolis. Princeton, the backdoor cuts Gabe Lorellis. They take the late lead over UCLA, the defending national champions. Coach Pete Carrill saw the Bruins miss it at the buzzer. One of the most stunning upsets in NCAA tournament history was completed. Sidney Johnson was a part of that squad. He was the captain of that team. Ivy League Player of the Year in 1997. They went undefeated in the Ivies that year. Sydney eventually played professionally in Spain and Italy. And what a job he has done with this Princeton program to bring them back to prominence in the Ivy. Jones with a leaner. And just the experience of being around Pete Carrill, never mind playing with him, playing for him, and having an opportunity to learn from him. One of the great coaches of all time in college basketball. 22-20, Kentucky leads at 5.20 to go in this first half. T.J. Bray back in there for Princeton. See how Kentucky is not really running out to the perimeter at all. That's a good way to defend. Trying to work it to the inside. Connolly back out for Davis, six to shoot. Davis contested shot, he got bumped. And free throws coming for Douglas Davis. It'll be Lamb picking up the personal foul. 22 to 20, Kentucky leads a timeout.
Matt coming up at and at the half scores and highlights the latest tournament news and a Naismith watch presented by at and that's all coming up on at and at the half. Well, Douglas Davis is a guy who's been carrying Princeton right now with his confidence and the ability to get his shot off, off the dribble. And then occasionally when he goes behind a screen, nobody follows him. He pulls up for his long jump shot there also. So one of the things, they needed a little punch in the arm early on. He goes to the line right now and has really given them a nice little lift early on in this basketball game. That Louisville-Moorhead State game is coming down to the wire. Under two minutes to go, and Louisville up by two. You can check out the action on TBS, Temple, and Penn State, and a close one as well over on TNT. And Pitt and North Carolina-Asheville in the first half over on True TV. A couple of close games. What's the translation? March Madness, I guess? Yeah, you're all over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll work. 22-22, Kentucky and Princeton. Deflected ball out of bounds, so Kentucky will hold on to it. Mark Harmon stars in a brand new episode of TV's number one drama. That's NCIS, Tuesday only, CBS. Shot clock is down to 12. Liggins with 435 left in this first half. Lamb. Missed it off the window, knocked outside, and here's the um, up-tempo style for Princeton. Davis crossover pull-up, count it. Uh, great crossover is right eye, and the other thing about it, you talk, and we talk a lot about separation. Making sure that if you're a little guy, how am I going to get my shot off against a big guy? Well, push him to the basket, pull it back, that gives you the separation for your easier jumper. First lead of the day for the Tigers. Jones gets an easy one on the interior. And Terrence Jones is beginning to pick it up. We are tied at 24. Yeah, you would think that Jones will get a couple of more touches on the blocks. That'll lead to Harrelson getting a couple of more also and maybe an offensive putback. Maddox, the drive. Good fake by Maddox as Jones will pick up the foul. He bit on it. And gets called on the personal. Free throws coming up for Kareem Maddox with Kentucky and Princeton all knotted up at 24 feet. March Madness continuing. Our hearts go out to the victims of Japan's devastating earthquake and tsunami. Find out how you can support disaster relief around the world. Visit redcross.org. CBS cares. We have 3.44 to play in this first half, and John Calipari's Kentucky Wildcats all tied up with the Princeton Tigers 24 apiece. Calipari now in his 19th year as Division I head coach, second season with Kentucky. And Kareem Maddox at the free throw line, 78% shooter. Try captain on this squad along with Dan Mavrades and Patrick Saunders. Hits on a pair. Yeah, you look at this Kentucky-Princeton matchup and you're just almost all the time waiting for Kentucky to explode, right? And have a bunch of runouts and maybe go up the three or four consecutive ones. I think they're almost playing into the hands of Princeton. If I'm Princeton, I think the key thing right now, Ian, is you want to come in here and just try to get through a half, show some Real discipline, keep the score close, and obviously as the adage goes, the longer the game goes close, the better chance you have of winning it. And Darius Miller taking matters into his own hands. Miller able to tie this one up at 26, and he has scored 10. Under a minute to go, Louisville and Moorhead State in a two-point game over on TBS. Now Brady's feeding the post, and denied by Harrelson. Ian Hummer could not get a clean shot off. And Harrelson has been a presence defensively. He sure has been. The quick step in, a little bit of an extension there with the arm, and not working for Herma coming to the basket on that little slice cut. Six blocks now for Kentucky. Harrelson, the transfer from Southwest Illinois College. Huge surprise this season, limited action over his Kentucky career prior to this year. Tied at 26, under three minutes to go in the first half. Miller wants a post-up. That's a big part of his game. Off the back end. Miller, book it. Size advantage 
perfectly executed in terms of the ability to really make things happen off the dribble. But if you go one, two, and three dribbles down deep, somebody has to get down there to help you out with a double team. Mr. Basketball in the state of Kentucky back in 2008. Out of Mason County High School, Maysville, Kentucky. Pull up jump, Davis is good. Boy, Lamb was all over him just then and had to bring that ball back just a touch. But once again, a little bit of a look down deep to Maddox. Maddox smart enough to kick the ball out. And that's where Davis is very, very good. Miller buries a three. Kentucky led the SEC in three-point shooting this season at 46%. Miller is like a different guy than the one we saw last year. Right. Well, when you get your opportunities and you know you're going to get playing time, if you make something happen early, good things will continue. Mavrady's cans it from long range. Another good look by Maddox out of the post. He's like a point guard down deep. It's nice to have that advantage. You try to attack underneath. He's very talented. He can go one-on-one -on -one with people, but if not, he's always willing to kick it out. And Mavrady's has just passed Sidney Johnson on Princeton's all-time scoring list, trying to move up the charts. I think Sidney's okay with it. Here's Miller. Off the back end. Ligon, shot clock down to six. Nope, he got it. And Lamb able to save, slapped out of there by Mavrady's. Princeton is running. Maddox up top for the slam. Nice extension, too, to hide the ball just for a second as Lamb went by. Terrific defensive effort to close by Princeton. 33-31, Princeton leads it with 50 seconds to go. First half. Catch and fire, Knight, short. Rebound tracked down by Miller. And a six-second difference. Shot clock, the game clock, we're winding down in this first half. Both with fouls to give. Working around the perimeter. The fantastic freshman Knight. Kick out. Liggins. Count it. A three. Now Knight, that ability to put the ball on the floor and go by people, he's just like a magnet. He drags people to the middle of the floor. That is why Kentucky's pretty good at shooting the long ball, because he breaks people down. Kentucky up by one on Princeton, 34 to 33, 12.4 remaining in the first half. They are down to four seconds left over on TBS. Moorhead State with a one-point lead over Louisville. Out of the Big East, you can catch the end of that over on TBS. All the games of the tournament are on four different networks. TBS, TNT, True TV, and of course, here on CBS. 12 seconds left, first half. Princeton trying to hit the locker room with a lead. Seven seconds left. Down to five. Connolly down to two. They're not going to get a shot off. Nope. Kentucky hits the break with a 34 to 33 lead over Princeton. Slow start for the Tigers, and they were able to get their balance and equilibrium. And a great charge right after about the 13-minute mark of the first half. As we check in with David Aldridge. Coach, I know you don't want to come up and press them because of the way they play, but is this tempo what you want? Well, no. We were in a press a few times. We backed away. We're playing six guys, so you got to pick your spots. But we want to be more aggressive. Uh, they're, they're doing a heck of a job. We're not playing as well. I thought Darius did some things. we got to get Brandon going. A uh, couple of the other guys are, you know, they're in a little bit of a funk, but that's that's all right. We're young, inexperienced, and this is what happens in these kind of games. So hopefully we'll get it right in halftime. All right, Coach, thanks very much. All right, D.A., thank you. End of the first half. Kentucky leads Princeton 34-33 to here in Tampa. We'll send you to at and at the half after this message and a word from your local station. Second round action from the East Region. It is halftime, and Kentucky leads Princeton 34 to 33. Just a moment ago, David Aldridge caught up with the head coach of the Tigers, Sidney Johnson. 
Coach, you made it a 20-minute game, so what is the most important thing in the next 10 minutes to keep you in the game and give you a chance to win? Well, we've got to have a pretty good start. I mean, we've got to figure out how to defend Darius Miller. Uh, he's really good. I, I wish Pritzen took transfers. We could get him into school. I mean, he's, he's special. So we've got to figure that out. Um, we're taking care of the defensive boards, which is nice, so we've got to keep that going as well. Coach, thanks very much. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, David, thank you. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle rejoining you courtside here in Tampa. Well, Kentucky's got the one-point lead. Princeton, right. nobody was quite sure what to expect from the Tigers in this game going against the number four seed. Kentucky handled themselves quite well in the first half. Now the question, how does Kentucky respond under some pressure? I think what Kentucky has to do is extend a little bit and force the action a little bit more. You know, that'll get their offense and their transition game going a little bit, but to play stagnant half-court defense is not going to cut it for them, I don't think. And you take a look at what Princeton did. Princeton really closed the middle of the floor up very nicely against the Kentucky strength and the drives and able to work the glass. And really, it's a committee rebounding and effort. You know, when you look at Princeton, most times they have two and three guys in the paint. That last one right there, a good deflection, allows them to get some up and down action. And a look at the numbers from that first half. Davis with 13 points to lead the way for Princeton. Maddox came off the bench with eight. Kentucky. Sidney Johnson talked about it, the play of Darius Miller, the junior, with 15 points. You don't see Brandon Knight up there. He did not score. The freshman for Kentucky, first team all SEC. And the first time this season that he has been held scoreless after one half of play. 34-33, Kentucky with the lead, and they open up with the basketball. Start of the second half. Lamb swings it. Miller open look at a three. Rebound. Battle for it. And Princeton's got it. Davis will bring it up the floor. Princeton with a chance to take the lead. Good start there by Kentucky, at least in thought process, to get your hot hand going again for the second half. This is a Princeton team that went 25 and 6, 12 and 2 in the Ivy League. Davis a three. And it's rebounded by Liggins. Getting the nod in this second half. That means Terrence Jones is on the Kentucky bench. And one of the things offensively, too, that Princeton did in the first three or four minutes of this game, I in the first half, I thought they settled for too quick a shot from the outside. Let's see if they're a little bit more patient to start the second half down at their off offensive end of the floor, but they're still going to squeeze this in as much as they can defensively. Liggins off the kick for Miller. Two-man game. Liggins could not finish. Just never planted that left foot squarely to the floor to allow for his elevation. And Brady's using the screen out front. Hummer swings it inside. Connolly the back in on Harrelson. Little juke move. Doesn't go. Rebounded by Miller for Kentucky. Up the floor in a hurry. It's Lamb. Trying to get their transition game going a little bit. Knight on the dish off. It was knocked away and a turnover. Trying to get it to Harrelson. Didn't work. Once again, the squeeze defense. Princeton with a hand and a deflection. Fifth Kentucky turnover. Princeton has turned it over three times. 34-33. Wildcats. Davis, the hero in the Ivy League playoff game, the victory over Harvard, 63-62. Navrady is a three. Got it. There's one of those settles. But boy, he had a nice look at it. Good rhythm. And once again, Princeton has built some confidence. A good start. As Sidney Johnson said, they want to get off to a good start in the first five minutes and play relaxed basketball. Well done. Early stages, second half here in Tampa. The tournament summary, 2010 Final Four teams, Butler and West Virginia both advance. Moorhead State with the upset, 13 versus a four. And I have identified six different players as Mr. Basketball in their states through the first two games. I knew somebody was keeping track of that. Six. Six, six of them. You know, you right. and I have done enough of these tournaments through the years to know that the lower seeds, they get a belief, and you can yep. see it. You can feel it, and Princeton is starting to get that. They sure are, and that's why if I were Kentucky and John Calipari right now, I, I don't think I would wait until the last five minutes of this game to try the little traps, little presses at the defensive end. I think I'd come with them the next couple of minutes. Kick out. Liggins lines it up. Can't hit the three. And the crash rebounding there for Princeton. Because there's still obviously a ton of time left in this half in the game. 
but I think I'd want to up tempo it defensively and look for a trap. Try to get Princeton to get out of their sequence of sets and their real easy rhythm at the offensive end. Terrence Jones still on the bench for Kentucky, did not start this second half. Did you know a backdoor cut is going to come sooner or later? Davis fires, can't hit it. Long rebound, it's Connolly for Princeton. And an extended possession here for the Tigers. Conley started to drift back to defend his own basket, but made the right choice to go after that ball in the offensive glass. Princeton shooting it at 45%. Kentucky is at 48%. Look at how wide open the court is right now underneath the basket when they spread the floor. Off the screen, now a switch. Harrelson there with Davis. Swing it out for Saunders. Work it inside, and Connolly coughs it up. Fourth Princeton turnover. Knight shifts it into another gear. Runner doesn't go, and it's cleared by Connolly. Saunders also keeping Harrelson off that glass. Very good offensive rebounder, but we haven't seen any yet in this second half for Kentucky. Here's Matt Rady's giving it up. Watch the move. Look at the middle of the floor. Hummer swings it. Connolly the jumper. Tips it outside, and it's Lamb that comes up with a loose ball. They're trying to get it to go a little bit. Nice cut. Harrelson, it's good, and a foul. Kentucky gets its first point to the second half. And a chance to grab the lead. Rather than the defensive end, what Kentucky's trying to do is up-tempo it a little bit on the offensive side, try to make some different cuts, make some things happen in terms of going for the basket. A beautiful delivery, and there's that strength of Harrelson down deep. And Mavrades with the personal foul. Harrelson with eight points, six rebounds. He's got good hands, big body at 6'10", 275 pounds. And he completes the three-point play, a 67% shooter. Terrence Jones is in for the first time in this second half. Five points. He does not have a rebound. He led the SEC in rebounding this season at nine per game. And Maddox out there handling the basketball, bringing it across half court. 37-36, Kentucky. Just over four minutes elapsed in the second half. Davis lines it up. Three ball doesn't go. Rebound, wrestled away, and a foul called. It looked like Jones and Knight collided, and Ian Hummer was the third man in. And it's going to be number two on the Vienna-Virginia native. Timeout. St. Patrick's Day. I guess it's blue in Kentucky, right? <laughs> Read that on the fly. The 2011 NCAA Tournament, you can watch every tournament game live online with NCAA March Madness On Demand at mmod.ncaa.com. 37-36, Kentucky leading Princeton. Kentucky the four seed in the East, Princeton the 13 seed. And there's activity all around the NCAA Tournament with Pittsburgh at the half leading North Carolina Asheville 30 to 25 and just about set to begin Vanderbilt and Richmond over on TBS that pit North Carolina Asheville game on True TV and San Diego State and Northern Colorado coming up on TNT one point lead for Kentucky Brandon Knight who averages 17 and a half points per game is yet to score for the Wildcats Get it inside. Miller. Oh, denied! Do yeah. not go in there! There was a whistle way before that play, though. On the floor before the attack. Ian Hummer just met Miller at the top of his release point. And the foul is called. Well, see, I think there's a foul for the reach-in before, even though this is a sensational block. The foul was on Davis. Yeah, on the reach-in and the bump before that play occurred. Just the same, it was a pretty, pretty decent block. Lamb, the leaner, and it's rebounded by Mavrides. The 
Princeton jerseys continue to hang around the basket defensively and rebound by committee, getting the guards back. Navarides, the dish deflected. Out of bounds, last touch by Kentucky. 22 seconds on the shot clock, 15.05 on the game clock. Next time, Mavrades has to drive down the middle of the floor like that eye, and I'm sure he's going to go right to the bucket because he could have just then instead of that slip pass. Get it in for Connolly. Mavrades. Will Barrett on the floor for Princeton. Just over five minutes gone by in this second half. Shot clock is down to ten. Mavrades makes his move. Five to shoot. Maddox, stutter step. Shot clock down to two. Oh, tough release. And Maddox knocks it down. Maddox is so tricky with the basketball because he has that ability. Many people don't know how to do this as far as players are concerned, but to be able to drift and pull the ball back in your shot and reload it just the touch to avoid it being blocked. 38-37. Princeton in front. Post up again for Miller. Nice hands from behind. Maddox with the strip. Mavrides drives in, doesn't get the roll, the tip and goes. Trailing on the play, Hummer will get credit for the bucket. Princeton has its largest lead of the game, three. Last NCAA tournament win for Princeton, 1998, as a five seed over UNLV. They were a 13 seed in 96 when they pull, pulled off the shocker against UCLA. Not allowing Knight to get around the corner, not allowing to penetrate. Here's Knight. Now he gets an open look. And rebounded by Barrett for the Tigers. One and done for Kentucky. Knight still zero for the game. Boy, what a storyline that is, huh? 0 of 5 from the field. Navrades, the drive and dish, and the open layup. It's Connolly by himself. Timeout, Kentucky. Well, take a look, watch the defenders, Harrelson, look at him, he's up in the air, way too late to respond, a 6-0 run for Princeton. Well, Princeton has put together a nice run at the defensive end of the floor, Maddox with the quick strip, Brady's down the floor, and they continue spotting up, trying to run the break as much as they can when they can get out in front. He just didn't get a good enough elevation to get a clearance, but great follow-up there by Hummer. And all of a sudden, they have Kentucky thinking on a one for seven second half shooting. What is going on here? There is one four seed from the state of Kentucky that has already lost today. Louisville mm -hmm. falling to Moorhead State. The Kentucky Wildcats trail 13 seeded Princeton East Region 42 37. Seven minutes gone by in the second half. They just cannot get into a rhythm offensively. Miller's jump shot, yes. Boy, if not for Miller, you, for Miller, you wonder what would have happened to Kentucky to this point. Just been lighting it up. 17 for Darius Miller, the junior. And Princeton leads by three. High screen set by Barrett. They'll get Connolly involved. Yeah, they want to get Connolly up high, too. That opens up the backdoor cuts. And the feed by Maddox got deflected and knocked out of bounds. Check out the Powerade Ion four-point performance ranking system to get a peek into the science behind tournament success. See where your team ranks at NCAA.com slash Powerade. 42-39, Princeton. 17 to shoot. The senior map, Radies. Nine on the timer. Oh. Free ball, Mavrady scoops it up. Shot clock down to five. And nobody home on the bounce pass. He That's thought up. Maddox would roll towards the rim. And Sidney Johnson claims it was officials are gonna get together. Knocked right? out of bounds off of Kentucky. Yeah, they're gonna get together, which is the right thing to do. Yeah. That hit nobody. I didn't say they'd get it right. I just said that was the right <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> the reaction by Sidney Johnson. And the officials did huddle together, and the shot clock is at four. Princeton will hold on to it. Navrades gets it in. Connolly, shot clock down to one. Oh! He gets the roll. You don't want to give it to the big guy usually. 
not just him, but any big guy, because it's too much responsibility to put it on the floor. But the 6'11 guy, Conley, really goes to the basket and makes it happen. 44-39. Conley, the sophomore from Brentwood, Tennessee. Harrelson, the muscle on the interior. And he's going to the free throw line. Starts with his partner, Jones, positioning himself down deep and muscling it up. And watch the little guy at 5'11", or I mean 6'11", making it happen. Playing like he's 5'11", guard, finishing it off. Coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Game summary here in Tampa, Princeton 44, Kentucky 39. Princeton shooting it at 47% from the field. And Kentucky three of eight from three-point range. Davis the high man for Princeton with 13. And Darius Miller has 17 to lead Kentucky. But how about the freshman, Brandon Knight, the leading freshman scorer in the nation at 17 and a half points per game. He's yet to score. Terrence Jones is has been held to five points, and Duran Lamb just five points as well for the Wildcats. Well, that is a lot of scoring to make up. They're supposed to be scoring at 47 on the game, and they only have 10 to this point. And what that does also, Ian, is that guys are supposed to step up around them. It's not really happening, and, you know, you've built up a, a security blanket to depend on one of those three guys to really have a good game to carry us. Harrelson goes 0 for 2. And a tie-up possession arrow goes to Princeton. Harrelson a 67% shooter. Mavrades took a shot at, to the top of the head. Princeton with a 44-39 lead in the ball. Finally, John Calipari decides I'm going to up-tempo this from a defensive standpoint. Now let's see how Princeton reacts to it. Keep in mind, if they continue Princeton to keep the high centers, whatever they have, now Maddox, try to keep them at the foul line or extended. You want to see as much space on that floor as you can below the free throw line for your backdoor cuts. This is a Princeton team that went 57-92 and 92 from 04 to 09. What a turnaround for this program. Barrett, out of bounds, and he tucked it last. Harrelson was there defensively to cut off the angle. Fifth Princeton turnover. Tries to turn the corner. Let's see if it goes off his own foot. Yep, nice job by Harrelson. Good call from the officials. Kentucky will take it. You know, sometimes that full court pressure is just enough. Even though you don't get a turnover, it's enough to get you kind of blood pumping just a little bit, get your energy going at the defensive end. Liggins, little hop step. Harrelson, great position on the inside. 11 points for Josh Harrelson. It's a three-point game. Harrelson is 5 of 5 from the field. Davis swings it. Navarrete is catch and shoot. And Harrelson tracks down the rebound. And they're trying to push it as much as they can, but nice balance defensively in the transition by Princeton. Set it up in the half court. Jones for Liggins. In the half court, they have to look some of the blocks. Miller, he's been assertive. And a foul called. Navarides was trying to take it away. He thought he had a tie-up. It's going to be the third personal on Dan Mavrides. Well, you take a look at this little look here. Going through. I'm not so sure how Liggins got that one through over to Harrelson. And let's see if there's a double team here. He's stripped in. You know, the only downside for Mavrides just then, Ian, is that you see his right hand come from above his shoulder coming down. Sometimes you get in trouble. It kind of instantly brings the attention of the official to that, that hand coming down on the ball. 15 foul against Princeton. Kentucky is yet to have a whistle work against them as far as team fouls in the second half. 10-20 to go. Jones leaning attempt. And he got it to go down. Yeah, almost like a dead ball he put up just then. That had no spin on it. And when it hit the back of the rim, it just died. It was like a half a knuckle ball. And Big Blue Nation reacts here in Tampa. 44-43, Princeton deflected. Davis sticks with it. Davis, the jumper, short. And rebounded by Lamb. Kentucky with a chance to grab the lead. Lamb slicing to the rim. It's good. Deron Lamb. A 6-0 run for Kentucky. Watch the double teams. 
Ricky Johnson obviously believes in his team. I was just going to say he's letting them play through. I would have called that timeout after taking a few seconds off the clock myself. Kentucky back in front with 9.36 left to go in Tampa. We have had eight lead changes here today. The latest one coming from Deron Lamb getting to the hole, and he was banged up at the end of this play. It sure was. Connolly fell on top of him. Remember, Lamb suffered a left ankle injury in the semifinals of the SEC tournament in Atlanta, victory over Alabama. Pressure a little stronger on the outside, on the perimeter by Kentucky. Let's see how Princeton handles it. A back in now, Hummer. Outside, open look, T.J. Bray missed it. And it's rebounded by Miller. Kentucky was in a fairly close game against Cornell last year at the Carrier Dome. Oh, in the Sweet away. 16, the step through, and Maddox missed it. The Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year made the play on the one end, but could not finish it up on the other. And Sidney Johnson down his end, the coach of Princeton, just then looking at the trailing official, saying, what's up with that? No, no call on the Maddox drive. Liggins. Nice pass. What a find. Another connection, Liggins to Harrelson. Yep, that's his second in the last two minutes. A terrific, terrific pass because of the delay in getting it there. Nice hang time. And did he ever know where his partner was going to be on the blocks? Kentucky beat Cornell in the Sweet 16, 62-45. But it was a six-point game with 5.15 left. And a foul call as Maddox was passing off to Connolly. Well, you take a look at the drive and look over here. He knows exactly, and Harrelson knows exactly where the ball's going to come to him, and all he has to do is plant them. But look at the way Liggins comes through the lane and delivers and brings people to him. Good challenge, good heart, slice to the basket. Harrelson has 13 points, 8 rebounds. Liggins has done an excellent job sharing the ball. And an 8-0 run for Kentucky to take this 47-44 lead. Wow. Brady's intercepted by Harrison. That's the downside in trying to pass it to the big guy. If they don't get open immediately, it's very difficult to get it to them. This Kentucky team, number 11 in the AP poll. All-time leader in wins, 2,048 for the program. Catch and fire, Miller can't hit the three. And rebounded by Hummer for Princeton. Navrady's high screen set by Connolly. Continues on the drive and sneaks in for the bucket. A terrific hesitation by Mavridis. And all he was waiting for I was for the big guy to commit. And once you have a big guy out on the floor, you just try to lock him, lock him with a little hesitation. You get the knees to lock and buckle. And boy, you can blow by anybody that big out front. Double figures for Mavridis. Ten points. Miller trying to break him down off the dribble. Jones lines it up and buries it a three. Terrence Jones, 30% from three-point range this season. He gives Kentucky a four-point lead. And as a team, they're getting a little bit of better bounce defensively now. They're more active outside. But Princeton doesn't look like they're rattled in terms of running their set. Connolly out front. Seven minutes to go. Just can't get any back doors. Not that there have been many opportunities. Hummer back in on Jones. Eight to shoot with the right hand. It's Hummer. The floater goes. Starting to pick up a little bit, huh? 50 to 48, Kentucky. We are down to 640 remaining in the second half here in Tampa. Second round action, East Region, Kentucky the four seed, Princeton the 13 seed. Winner will play West Virginia, who knocked off Clemson earlier today. Liggins a three, bottom! You touched on it before, the way they shoot the three ball for John Calipari's squad, and that's because they put the ball on the floor, they challenge you off the dribble, and they force the weak side guy to commit and leave the shooter. It's a 14-4 extended run for Kentucky, 53-48. Davis, tight defense there from Lamb. They're doing this with Knight on the bench. Hummer doesn't get the roll. Harrelson gets it up the floor for Lamb. Under six minutes to play. Lamb, screen set by Harrelson, double team. The curl. 
Liggins out of control. He lost it. Yep. And a push. Yeah, it's going to go against Liggins also. Just the second team foul against John Calipari's squad. The Kentucky Wildcats leading Princeton 53 to 48. Second half action. Greg Gumbel in New York with a tournament update for you in Washington, D.C. Over on True TV, the number one seed in the southeast, Pittsburgh, keeping its head above water against UNC Asheville. Ashton Gift, 11 points to lead the way. 41-35, Pittsburgh back to Tampa. And Jamie Dixon trying to take the Pittsburgh Panthers on an extended run in the NCAA tournament. John Calipari went to the Elite Eight last year with Kentucky, but not a lot of holdovers from that squad to this year's team. You've got Darius Miller, DeAndre Liggins, and Josh Harrelson. Meanwhile, for Princeton, they had a 44-39 lead. They were up by five. It's been a 10-point swing in favor of Kentucky. The winner here will take on West Virginia, the five-seed advance with a win over Clemson earlier today here in Tampa. West Virginia using that nice run at the end of the first half and going into the second half to put Clemson away. Good catch. Off the timeout, Hummer backs it out. Now Brady's. We are down to 5.22 left second half. Will Barrett, talented sophomore. Get it inside for Maddox. The cut and the finish. It's Hummer on the receiving end. And Maddox once again from the post area. A terrific pass. And Princeton continues to just hang around and squeeze the clock a little bit. 53 to 50 Kentucky. Knight is back on the floor. Under five minutes to play. Harrelson denied. Hummer comes up with a clean block on the inside. Both ends of the floor just then for Hummer. And now you start the frustration. See if they can get Kentucky frustrated at the defensive end with their patience once again. Barrett for Hummer. Stutter step. He draws the foul. Ian Hummer will go to the free throw line. You take a look at this little slice cut. Nice delay. You have to wait it out if you're Maddox. Terrific work. And then at the defensive end of the floor, Harrelson thinks he has an easy one. Terrific job defensively again by Hummer at both ends of the floor. Ian's father, Ed, played on Princeton's 1965 Final Four team. His uncle, John, was a two-time All-Ivy League selection and played in the NBA for six years. Get coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Tournament at NCAA.com slash Final Four. Ian Hummer, he grew up in ACC country, had some other opportunities, decided to go to Princeton and stick with the family tradition. T.J. Bray into the game. He replaces Doug Davis. 53-51. Kentucky. There's Liggins for Lamb. A hard drive by Lamb. And the running one-hander doesn't go. Rebound knocked to the outside, and Knight's got it for Kentucky. And that's what Harrelson does so well. Keeping second opportunities alive. Knight can't get it to go. Harrelson! Oh, so strong on the interior! And a chance for three. You talk about a guy who understands and has gotten better and better at using his size, his strength, and his positioning. Quite a story for Kentucky, the way he's impro improved by the year. And watch him down deep go to work. The best offensive rebounder in the SEC. And boy, it goes up quickly right there to finish and finishes it off with a solid reaction. Game reset, Kentucky leading Princeton 55-51 to with 3.58 to play in the second half. And Kentucky has the possession arrow. 16 fouls against Princeton. The crowd has been terrific here in Tampa, including those two guys on the right, orange guys. Yeah, I was a little concerned because they were going to flip a coin to be play-by-play -play guy today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I walked by them earlier and really feel like I got to know them very well. I almost wore my orange suit today, too. 
No, that, <laughs> that's coincidental. Harrelson at the free throw line. John Calipari telling us yesterday that he got in much better shape this year, changed his approach, the way he practiced as well, as it's out of bounds, and Princeton will have it. Two guys going after the ball just then on that missed free throw. No real big argument along the Kentucky side of their bench. Kentucky riding a six-game winning streak coming into the NCAA tournament. Their last loss since February 12th came in overtime at Arkansas. So they've been playing at a very high level. They need Princeton 55 to 51. Davis using the screen. Off the zigzag jumper, no. And the box out by Jones. Hard to get around Jones when he first boxes you out and then goes after and challenges and goes after that basketball like that. 55-51 Kentucky. Step through and the steal for Hummer. Yep. Nice roll there by Hummer to move his feet first rather than just swipe at the basketball. Princeton needs to get a confidence bucket right now or get to the free throw line. Three minutes left. Davis gives it up, gets it back. Mismatch with Harrelson. Now a switch, he's got Jones. Matt Brady's on the outside. Crossover and kick. Hummer, the floater, no. Knocked out of there by Connolly in a reset for Princeton with 2.40 to play, down by four. Harrelson never got a body on him to root. Connolly away from the basket. They just both turned and jumped. Good work by Connolly knowing that he could not get it. And just took a swipe at it to get it back to your possession. Douglas Davis, 0 of 5 from the field in the second half. Oof. Oh, big time blocked by Jones, extending out on Davis. Out of bounds. A lot of times the little guys feel if they get the bigs out there, they can get their shot off. Oh, sorry, not that time. Not so much. Wow, what a quick extension there by Jones. Now Jones will sit down for Kentucky. Seventh Kentucky block of the game. 2-22 left. They still have time on the shot clock. 12 to shoot. Now Brady's. Oh, he banks it in. Timeout, Princeton. Little traffic action just then. I don't think he wanted to go glass, but he had to put it against the glass just because he gets in traffic. He has to readjust. He'll take it. Down two. 24th trip to the NCAA tournament for the Princeton Tigers. A 63-62 win over Harvard in the Ivy League playoff to get them here. A buzzer beater by Douglas Davis. The drama at the end. And here they are in Tampa in a close one against Kentucky, the number four seed in the East, 55 to 53 with 214 to play, second half. If I'm Princeton and I'm Sidney Johnson, I'm just telling my guys, hey guys, just keep playing hard. Have fun. This is a great opportunity. They should have the pressure on them down at the other end. Miller gives it up. Liggins knifes his way to the rim. And DeAndre Liggins has had an impact here today. 57 to 53. Like the approach of Kentucky just then, too. Make sure you put it on the floor. Make sure you get it going towards the hoop a couple of times. Down to a minute, 40 to play. Drops up. Maddox shows the ball. Turn around. Oh. Got it! Wow, was he ever patient, huh? He looked about two or three times to get rid of the basketball. He's very good at using the pivot foot and also finding the body, raising up against them. 12 points for Maddox. 57 to 55. We are down to a minute 15 to go. Last trip down, Kentucky put the ball on the floor and tried to make things happen. A little stale right now. Knight, wow. short. You notice the difference just then? No real attack, not with the dribble. They kind of settled, so it was two different looks just then. Princeton wants to talk this thing over. It makes a little bit of sense with under a minute to go. Brandon Knight is 0 of 7 from the field. Princeton down by two with the ball. Under a minute left. A battle here in Tampa. The Kentucky Wildcats 57, the Princeton Tigers 55. Kentucky seated fourth in the East region, and Kentucky the 
number 11 team in the country, taking on the number 13 seed in the East, Princeton. Tigers with the ball, down by two. Well, if you're Kentucky in that timeout, I think you want to continue to defend like you have been without leaning your body away from the basket. Because remember, we have not seen many Princeton backdoor cuts yet, but the timing is right for one right now if you can get Kentucky a little bit more aggressive out on the, out on the perimeter. 50 seconds left. And this guy Davis is very good with the basketball, obviously, too, off the dribble. On the outside, Navarides, step away, oh. buries it! We are tied at 57. Timeout, Kentucky. Game reset, Kentucky and Princeton tied at 57. Possession arrow belongs to Kentucky. Each team with a timeout remaining. Kentucky, just three team fouls. Princeton with six. There's a one second difference. Shot clock to game clock, final moments of regulation. To me, Ian, that one second means nothing right now in terms of the differential. I'd play this, if I were Kentucky, is the worst thing I want to have happen right now is to go into overtime. So what I would do is I'd instruct these guys to sit on the basketball, and Sidney Johnson has a decision to make whether he's going to attack defensively. But if I'm Kentucky, I just bring this down and I try to get a shot up with the shot clock down to about four seconds or so, allows me for an offensive tip in. And just wait it out. Downside, if you're Princeton on this, is a clearly, if Kentucky scores, you're only going to have one, two, or three seconds left on the clock. 15 seconds left. Kentucky and Princeton all tied up. Tension here in Tampa. Nine seconds left. Knight on the outside. Five seconds left. Knight with three, with two. The runner goes down with two seconds to go. Kentucky up by two. And a timeout called by Princeton. Knight with his first bucket of the afternoon. A terrific isolation. Well done on the clock. Look at the big stride, the big step. And what a difficult, difficult shot to put it up off the window. Floating out of bounds. A terrific move by the youngster. The officials during that break were reviewing to see how much time was right. actually left on the clock for Princeton to work with. To my eye, the first time, it's when the ball clears the net. I, and I thought there was two seconds left. So let's take a look at what happens. Ball goes through right now, two seconds. And keep in mind, Sidney Johnson down the other side. You see the official on the right at half court almost. He's yelling at that official right now that I want a timeout. So that inbounds pass that we saw did not count because he had already called for the timeout. Now keep in mind with Kentucky, they have three fouls to burn right now. So they can make a judgment as the ball is thrown in, has to be thrown in to foul before a shot even gets up. So you may see a little bear hug type of catch and grab. The first points of the game for Brandon Knight has given Kentucky a 59 to 57 lead. I think you better go deep though. They get it in. Maddox, a heave at the horn. It was late and it's over. A narrow escape for the Kentucky Wildcats. They beat Princeton 59 to 57 to advance. Brandon Knight, a floater with two seconds left, is the difference. Kentucky takes it over the Tigers 59 to 57 to move on. They will play West Virginia in the third round of the East Region. Kentucky survives. Harrelson was outstanding. 15 points, 10 rebounds to lead the way for Kentucky. And for Sidney Johnson and company, a bitter loss. There was an opportunity there. Kentucky holds on for the win as we send it to Ernie Johnson.